Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The first step accomplished on the patient is redefining the borders with modeling compounds. The initial areas molded are the retrozygomatic spaces, done on one side at a time. After one side has been completed, compound is added to the opposite side. The patient is asked to move his jaw from side to side. As the coronoid process comes forward, it develops the details of the area of the impression trays. When this is satisfactorily accomplished, the posterior border is refined. This border should be placed at the junction of the movable and non-movable tissues. The border molding is continued across the midline of the palate. This does not automatically determine the exact distal extension of the denture. By looking at the anatomic structures on the compound and locating the fulvi palatini and the hamular notches, a line is drawn through these landmarks with an indelible pencil. The tray again is inserted into the mouth. The patient is instructed to move the soft palate by eliciting a long, drawn-out sound. The indelible marking is transferred to the palate. The operator can determine whether the pencil marking coincides with the junction of the movable and non-movable tissue. The excess compound is trimmed to this line. Using zinc oxide and eugenol paste, the final impression is made of the edentulous portion of the mouth. The excess impression material is cut away. And the functional post dam added to the impression. This is one of the advantages of this type of impression for the immediate denture patient. Correctable wax, which has some flow at body temperatures, is added to the posterior border. The wax is placed through the hamula notch areas and made about a quarter of an inch wide at the midline. The posterior impression with a wax addition is returned to the mouth and held in place for about four or five minutes. When the wax reaches body temperature, pressure is exerted on the impression tray. At this stage, the impression should demonstrate good retention. This completes the first section of the impression. The secondary impression material is distributed evenly over the tissue surface and the postpalatal seal affected. Any excess zinc oxide paste is removed from the anterior portion of the impression to permit the second tray to fit the posterior portion exactly. This sequence shows the assembly of the dual trays before placing them into the mouth. They join snugly. The posterior borders have been fully developed in this first part of the impression. The impression is again placed into the mouth and fully seated. An elastic impression material, in this case alginate, is carefully loaded into the labial vestibule. This will prevent voids made by trapping air at either side of the frenulum. The loaded anterior portion of the tray is delivered to the mouth. The tray should be fully seated. 
the index finger is inserted through the central opening and the first portion of the tray is held in position in contact with the supporting tissues. The lip is drawn down over the flange of the anterior portion of the tray. After the alginate has gelled, the impression is removed from the mouth. Although the construction of custom trays requires slightly more laboratory time, the following advantages are enjoyed. One, control of the border extensions. Two, permits the use of a functional type of post-palatal seal. And three, the edentulous portion of the final impression may be used as a stable record base. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.